Now about those exquisite 3D animations we've been showing you, I'm delighted to be joined by Dean Wright, who with his wife Emma is the creator. Dean, first of all, how do you become a 3D animator? I presume you went to uni. What sort of degrees can you get these days in this sort of field? Well, that's right. I went to university at Bournemouth and did computer visualisation animation. Um, but honestly, my passion has always been motorsport, so it's been great to be able to combine animation and the visual effects side with the, with the Formula One. Well, we've got three cars at the moment. We've got the Ferrari, the Mercedes and the Red Bull, and there'll be more coming. But tell us about how you go about doing the car. We, we can't give too much away, but I can tell you that we do sign NDAs with the Formula One teams and we have had access to some of the CAD drawings. But beyond that, a lot of it is obviously digital photography that we get from the racetracks. And, and then it's over to you to make it all happen. Yeah, that's right. So we have some reference images which we would often bring into the 3D space. And we want the boring photos. We want photos that are very flat, very straight, and they give us the best way to get proportions. And that allows us to build curves and wireframe, which we can show here, as a starting point. So we have the reference images, which are very flat, very flat, straight on. And these curves here, if we bring them out, they actually form the curves and dimensions of the car without actually filling the spaces in. So it's almost like a sketch, basically, before we build them. And how much, you say it's almost like a sketch, but I guess it's mathematically driven throughout yes. the process. So yes, tell us about the combination of sketching and arithmetic, yeah, geometry. Well, it's actually really important to get edge flow here. So you can see that the lines and curves, they flow over the, the mm. dynamics of the car. And it's really important. If they, if they don't wow. have this flow in this grid shape, it breaks up the object, it breaks it up, and actually, just like the real car, it would disturb the airflow. For us, it would disturb the image, it, would, it wouldn't look clean. So yeah, it is, it, the maths is important, but at the same time, we've got to render this fast, so the polygon count has to be low. And then it has to be in the correct livery. And, you, and that's obviously, it's a fun bit, I would guess, of the whole thing, is it, doing the livery? Yeah. Is it like the, the icing on the cake sort of thing? Yeah, that's right. It's actually, it's essentially like uh, texture painting is what you'd call it. And just like the real car, they have um, stickers, which they, they, they're flat, these stickers, but they're designed to fall over the shape of the car really nicely. It's exactly what we do. In Photoshop, we draw up these images, and we've got one here for the Ferrari that we can show. And they all, they all flat here, and they're all spaced out different sections of the car here. Mm. Each one of them will then get mapped onto the 3D. So each part of this you'll see on the 3D car relates to the side panels, the rear wing, etc. And what sort of computer do you need to do this? Is it not a standard laptop, I would guess. No, it, the, the software is really what drives it. For the building, a, a, like a mid-power laptop is fine. It's the rendering when you need a powerful laptop, for sure, or a powerful desktop machine. And um, what does rendering actually mean? I mean, I know it's a long, painful process, but what actually is going on there? Sure, well, at the moment, as you can see, it's kind of quite flat. There's no, there's no reflections, there's no lighting. It's, it's a build mode. It allows us to see cleanly what we're building. But we'll use other programs to render, render the images to, make, to add all that lighting and all that depth. It's almost, uh, you can imagine it like a clay model. The clay model is the building phase, but if you want to make it look good when it's on camera, you've got to set your lights up, you've got to give it stuff to reflect, and of course an animator's got to get in and get in there and start moving bits around. I get that. When the car's spinning around and you can look at it, it would seem from any angle, is that right? Once, it's cre once you've created it? Is that yeah, I mean, Any that, angle? that's the advantage of going in 3D. I mean, if we want, we can go inside these layers of the components, and that's something that we work on now and again. We'll look inside the behind, what's behind the wheel hubs, we'll look at the brakes and such. And if we go into our After Effects here, you can see that the render phase, the, the quality of the imagery in steps up. So this is actually the Mercedes that we were looking at mm. earlier today. So now we've got reflections, we've got lighting, and this is a, a low resolution here, just to be for fast playback. Mm -hmm. But you can see we can move around freely and focus on components of the car, whatever you guys need for your and, technical. And that analysis. moving around aspect is, is created at the original matrix stage, I guess, is it? The ability to is, but the... But are you uh, thinking in your head, what angles do I want to look exactly. at? Exactly. Yeah, yeah you've got it, we've always got to think in advance what, what resolution and what quality do we need, mm. depending on what you guys want to analyse. Well, what we want and what we're doing, thanks to Dean and his wife Emma, is creating these cars and then as they get updated race by race, virtually race by race, Dean, Scarb sometimes says, oh, no changes on the cars, it's really boring, but it's pretty rare that happens. We want to get those changes out within 24 hours, Dean. Is that feasible? That's the target. <laughs> but at the moment, you, you can do that, right? 36 hours, let's call it. You can, we can see a new front wing, and you can basically get it out 
Yes. Once you've got the car built, we can get that new front wing on the car. Yeah, that's right. I, I would love to say I'm doing it all by myself, but <laughs> I do have some help from Emma as well. And the, between the two of us, we can get these cars out thanks to fast modelling, but also we use GPU rendering, which is a lot more efficient than the old CPU rendering that we see on movies. It's just a more efficient way of getting these videos turned out quick enough for you guys. And what would the movie guys say about your system? It's actually slowly coming around to movies and TV as well because people are seeing there are advantages to this type of workflow and the quality is just as good. The amount that you can do with the car is limited by time then really, but the sky's the limit is what I'm getting at. We could build a full Formula 1 car from top to bottom, but obviously it takes engineers years and it, we have to build those parts by hand as well, so it takes us a long time to build them too, but that is the target. And how are you personally now when you see a Formula One car, can you start to notice things that you would never have thought of two years ago? It's unbelievable. My, like, my knowledge of this has exploded now. And also the interesting thing for me is working on lots of cars at the same time, seeing how the teams kind of take ideas from each other. That's what's most interesting.